welcome back to Australia's biggest child safety lesson, brought to you by the Daniel Morgan Foundation. I'm Jack. And I'm Ella. Today, we're going to learn about permission. See if you can say it with me, everyone. Per-mi-shun. We can give or not give permission when someone asks to borrow our toy. Sometimes we can change our mind too. Permission can also be called consent. These words can sometimes be used to mean the same thing. Can you say it? Consent. Saying yes is called giving consent. Saying no is not giving consent or denying consent. Consent. That's the word for giving or not giving your permission for something. We're heading off around Australia with Denise and Bruce to help us learn about consent. We've started here at the Big Pineapple on the Sunshine Coast, Gubby Gubby Country in Queensland. Hi everyone. When someone wants to play with your favourite toy, consent. you might want to say yes. You can say yes in lots of ways. Yeah, great or sure. You might give a big smile and say an enthusiastic yes. You might even put your thumbs up. You can also say yes using communication tools. You could try this in your classroom or at home. Say an enthusiastic yes with me. Yes. Sharing toys is fun. But if you don't want to share your toy, you can say no. That means you don't give your permission or your consent. It might be that a friend wants to play hide and seek with you, but you're hot and tired. It's okay to say no. You might say no by saying no. Nah, not today. Shaking your head or turning away. You can also say no using communication tools. Practice saying this now. No, no thanks. The important thing is you can say no if it doesn't feel right. Even giving someone a hug or a kiss is your choice. It's okay to say, I don't like being hugged, or I don't feel like it today, thanks. Sometimes you might change your mind. It's your body, so it's always your choice. Your body belongs to you, and their body belongs to them. We'll learn more about that from our friends, Teeny Tiny Stevies. Sometimes our body gives us clues about saying yes or no. We might get butterflies in our tummy feel our heart beat faster, or our knees might go wobbly. Listening to our body clues helps us know whether it's a yes or a no feeling. Asking for permission means we're able to say yes when we want to, but knowing we have the right to say no as well can help us stay safe. We have the right to have our feelings and opinions heard and respected. We also need to respect other people's views and feelings. Let's get on the road and see what else we can learn about consent. Welcome to our next location. We're in Sydney, Gadigal Country in New South Wales. We're here to watch Bill and Beth from Teeny Tiny Stevie's perform. Did you know they're sisters? They've been performing together since they were teenagers. That's cool. They've written a song called Boss of My Own Body, which teaches us that touch is a choice that everyone makes and the decision is up to you. Remembering our body boundaries can help us understand why people need to ask us for consent. Your body boundary is the invisible space around your body, and just because it's invisible doesn't mean it isn't there. We'll learn more about this from Ms Buttercup soon. You're right, Jack. No one is allowed to enter your body boundary, touch, take photos or videos of your body without your consent. Even doctors, nurses, dentists and caregivers have to ask your permission to do any of those things. And remember, one of your parents or trusted adults need to be with you. Exactly. Like Teeny Tiny Stevie says, we are the boss of our own bodies. <gasps> They're about to start. Let's take a look. 
Hey everyone, I'm Bill. And I'm Beth. And we're Teeny Tiny, Tiny Stevies. Stevies. We have written a song just for you. It's an important song that should make you feel empowered with the understanding that you make the decisions about who touches your body and when. It's called Boss of My Own Body. That's right, you're the boss of your own bodies. So you're the one deciding. Let's sing it. And you can sing along too if you want. I'm not the boss of many things. I'm just little and still learning. But I am the boss of one thing. I'm not the boss of anyone else. I gotta let them be themselves. But I am the boss of one thing. I'm the boss of my own body. I'm the boss of my own body. I am the boss. Thanks, Bill and Beth. That's such a great song. So let's get this straight. I'm not the boss of the playground. Or my dinner time. Or my babysitter. Or your sister. But I am the boss of my own body, no matter how old I am. Exactly, and only I can consent for someone to come within my body boundary. I can say yes or no, they need to ask. For example, if someone asks for a hug. Yes, that's right. You're the boss of your own body. Morky has a similar saying. And remember, from your toes to your nose, nobody goes. Your body belongs to you. Understanding our private body parts and boundaries can help us to understand this a bit more. In fact, let's look at a recap. The parts of our body that are covered by cinquant undies, like our nipples, buttocks, vulva, vagina, penis and testicles, are the parts of our body that other people should not touch, look at or take photos of, and other people should never make a child look at or touch theirs. Even though people can see our mouth, no one is allowed to touch it or put anything in it. If a child is ever worried about anything to do with a private body part, they should talk to a safety helper. I'm the boss of my own body. It's up to the person to ask me for consent to come within my personal body boundary. And only I can give consent. I can say it's okay or not okay to be in my personal space. It's also important to remember that taking photos and videos of someone without their consent is never okay. And it's never okay for someone to take photos of or video your private body parts, or for you to take photos of theirs. If this has happened, talk to someone in your safety network straight away. Taking photos of ourselves and accidentally sharing them means it might end up in the wrong person's hands. We need to be careful with taking and sharing photos. Let's get on the road and head to Kakadu to learn more about consent. What a beautiful day here in Kakadu, Beninj and Mungi country in the Northern Territory. Here, we can learn about asking for consent and how consent can change. You can ask for consent in lots of different ways, depending on the situation. Remember, what's most important is that we need to respect the other person. We need to learn how to read the other person's reply. This can be with their words or with their body. We can use the word body language to help us understand this. Body language is when you say something with your body, not with your words. Let's take a look at what Jandamara and Amy are doing. See if you can spot Jandamara not giving consent with his body language and words. This walking has made me hungry. Time for a snack. Mmm, my favourite. Can I have some? Uh, I don't know. 
Did you see what happened here? Amy didn't listen to Jandy's response and just grabbed his food. His body language showed that he was unhappy about it. His body was tense and he looked away. He also looked sad. He definitely didn't give a clear and enthusiastic yes about sharing it with Amy. Hey, Amy, give them back. Sometimes people don't actually say no. They might say, I'm not sure, maybe, shake their head or shrug their shoulders. The best thing you can do is read this as a no. Give them space and don't pressure them into doing something they don't want to do. Sometimes you have to say no louder and stronger for someone to hear it. Amy, no! Can you please give it back now? Sorry, I was just trying it. I didn't want you to take it. Then you didn't listen when I asked you to stop. Amy should have realised when he said, I don't know, that he was actually trying to say no or wasn't sure. She also should have seen his body language was saying no too. He was looking away and didn't look very happy. Learning how to ask for consent, hearing their words and understanding their body language is really important. Let's get on the road and learn some more. What a lovely sunny day here in St Kilda, Bonnerung country in Victoria. Let's look at another example that combines what we've learned about personal boundaries and what we know about consent. Simon has run up and hugged Amy and Jandy without asking for permission. He stepped inside both of their personal boundaries without checking. This made Amy feel uncomfortable as she didn't want him to touch her. Remember, it's up to the person to first ask for consent and then they need to wait and listen for the answer. Just because Amy and Jandy were happy to hug Simon last time, it doesn't mean they want to hug him this time. It can change. Simon needed to ask Amy and Janie's permission and give them both a chance to make a decision. When you want to ask for permission, you can say, Can I? Do you mind if? Is it okay if? And so on. You can see in particular from Amy's body language that her body clues are telling her and Simon that she doesn't want to hug. You can see that Simon has moved in closer to Amy than what she is comfortable with. Once again, he hasn't asked for permission. We can see in Amy's body language that she does not give permission. Simon isn't paying attention to Amy's body language and her non-verbal signals. Sometimes people don't have to say no for us to hear no. They can show it with their body. We call this body language. It can be really hard to say no especially if the person is someone we want to impress, someone we care about, or someone older. Yes, Ella, but it's important to know that we have the right to say no. Like teeny tiny Stevie's taught us, you're the boss of your own body. Sometimes someone giving us a hug or a kiss can feel good, but sometimes it doesn't. Remember, listen to your body clues, and if it doesn't feel right, you can say no. Whether you have body clues or not, you always have the right to say no. Even though it can be hard to say no straight away. Some ways we can say no are no. I don't want to. Not today. No thanks. We can show no with our body. For example, 
shaking our head, walking away, looking away, looking for someone else. We can also do this. Say it with us. My body belongs to me. If someone doesn't listen to you and your body clues tell you that it doesn't feel right, you can talk to one of your safety helpers. Safety helpers are important because they will want to listen and help you if something has happened. We call this your safety network or safety team. Can I ask you to think about this? If anyone has harmed you in the past or is harming you now, please tell an adult who is on your safety network. If that person doesn't listen, tell the next person and the next and the next. We've learnt so far what permission and consent are, why we need to ask and how to ask for it, how to listen and respect a person's answer and how to say no. But what about if we want to do something? How do we give consent? There are lots of ways to say yes, Jack. For example, you can say yes, okay, sure, I'd love to. Our body language is another way we can say yes. By nodding, thumbs up, smiling and leaning in towards the other person. It's not always easy to read body language, so checking with someone that they mean yes is always a good idea. Listening to our own body clues is an important safety strategy for us all. Exactly. And listening to our body clues can help us know if it's a yes or a no. We want to have an enthusiastic yes. That means we are really sure. Permission and consent are not as simple as just yes or no. It's all about asking, listening and respecting people's responses. Stay safe, everyone. We're off on the road to help keep kids safe. See you all next time.